Belarus prepares entering the war against Ukraine. Expert. The president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, is trying to prove to the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, that there is a threat of Ukrainian invasion, so he cannot participate in the war now, but must prepare for resistance. This was stated by military expert, former company commander of the AIDA battalion, Yevgeny Diki, on air at Apostrophe TV, commenting on Lukashenko's words that they are allegedly trying to drag his country into a showdown. The expert notes that this must be responded to absolutely calmly without forgetting what is happening in Russian-Belarusian relations. Even from the beginning of the so-called SVO, when only the Russians were going through the territory of Belarus for a special operation, they were already trying to attract Belarusians along with them. And even when the whole world believed that we would hold out for a couple of weeks, that Russia was doomed to victory. Even then, Lukashenko dodged it, Dickie emphasized. He recalled that Lukashenko provided Russia with all the infrastructure and the opportunity to launch an intervention from the territory of Belarus, but not a single Belarusian soldier took part in it. And since then, the same story has been going on. Putin is trying to pressure Lukashenko so that he directly enters the war and so that the Belarusian army provides assistance to the Russians and Lukashenko is dancing ever more cunning dances with a tambourine, which boils down to the fact that, of course, comrade Putin, we are on your side. We are helping you all, but for various reasons, we are not ready to enter the war right now, said Dickie. According to him, the Belarusian leader explains to the Russian that the situation on the western border with Poland and Lithuania is such that not a single soldier can be transferred, that the army is not yet ready and that joint exercises are needed, preferably on Russian territory. He once again demonstrates that on the contrary, he needs to prepare to defend himself from a Ukrainian invasion and not go with the Russians, for example, the Chernihiv region. We should not underestimate Lukashenko. There is such a popular proverb. Stupid, stupid but cunning, noted Dicky. According to him, Lukashenko has had a huge amount of experience since his days as a collective farm chairman, pretending to the center that he is ready to follow all orders, but in reality quietly doing things his own way and not allowing himself to be drawn into some absolutely hopeless adventure. The Belarusian Defense Ministry has stated that Ukraine is allegedly amassing troops on their border and trying to drag the country into war. Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko has distinguished himself with new threats and accusations. He has also threatened that in the event of an escalation in Belarus, the world will shudder. The Center for Countering Disinformation stated that Russia will try to informationally stir up the topic of an offensive from Belarus in order to influence logistics and stretch Ukrainian forces. Ukrainians in Yak-52 shoot Russian drones with a shotgun. Ukrainian fighters in a Yak-52 propeller-driven World War I-era aircraft are hunting Russian drones and this week added two more drones to their list of destroyed drones. Forbes reports video footage from a Russian drone that went viral showed two Ukrainian pilots shooting down their final target, the drone itself, from the open cockpit of their 1970s-era Yak-52 trainer. The Yak-52 and the Russian drone are just yards apart. A Yak-52 passenger in the back seat, rumored to be armed with a drone-killing shotgun, appears to be taking aim at the drone, possibly the same gun that made him famous, the newspaper writes. Earlier this month, a Russian blogger complained that the Yak-52 crew was shooting at our UAVs like they were at a shooting gallery. Others compared the tactics to fighting during the First World War. Forbes recalls that back in mid-April, videos appeared on the internet showing a Yak-52 colliding with a Russian Orlan UAV over the Kherson region and shooting it down. In early June, a similar video appeared online, this time filmed by Russians. It shows a Yak-52 shooting down a Russian Zala reconnaissance drone. In addition, photographs that appeared on social media on Tuesday showed kill marks on the side of the Yak-52, at least six Orlan and two Zala drones. Video footage taken appears to show another pair of marks, suggesting Ukraine's drone hunters have had a busy week. Forbes writes, when the first videos of the Yak-52 fighting against drones appeared, some observers suggested that the aircraft crew was firing at the drones from underwing cannons or missile launchers, Forbes writes. At the same time, Italian aviation expert David Senziotti 
noted that very few Yak-52s were ever modified to install underwing weapons. Therefore, one should not be surprised when it turned out that the Ukrainians fired a shotgun from the back seat of the plane, the publication writes. At a time when the Ukrainian Air Force is trying to preserve its most expensive surface-to-air missiles for the most dangerous Russian targets, ballistic and cruise missiles, as well as manned fighter bombers delivering powerful bombing strikes, a guy with a gun on a slow propeller airplane is an inner expensive way to shoot down Russian drones far from the front line. Forbes writes, but that doesn't mean it's easy for the Ukrainians. Both the Yak-52 pilot and the rear seat gunner must be skilled and patient to accurately target the small drone. In all of the recent air crashes, the Yak-52 pilot apparently maneuvered within tens of meters of his target before the rear seat gunman opened fire. Earlier, it was reported that in Odessa, the Orlan 10 was destroyed from a training Yak-52. Analysts noted that the fact of their use indicates a shortage of anti-aircraft systems and missiles, which is only now beginning to be corrected thanks to the unblocking of US support. Recently, photos of a Yak-52 aircraft were posted in the public domain based on which one could conclude that its crew destroyed six Orlan-10 reconnaissance UAVs and two Russian-made Zala drones.